Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Moth of the Week. For this week I have this beauty that was sitting on my front door. This moth is a forest temp caterpillar moth. I'm going to quote Wikipedia real quick. Is a moth found throughout North America, especially in eastern regions. Unlike related tent caterpillars, the larvae of forest tent caterpillars do not make tents, but rather a weave a silky sheet where they all lie together. They also lay down strands of silk as they move over branches and travel as groups along these pheromone coated silk trails. They are social and like traveling together to feed and massing as a group to rest. I thought it might be kind of fun this week to talk about, like many others talk about, their fun, super fun times working in retail, which always breeds some interesting stories. I'm super grateful for my job I had, and it was a good first job, and I had a super nice team to work with. My managers were all really fun. But when you work at the mall, in a busy mall, and a mall full of moms and their teenage daughters, you're going to have an interesting time sometimes. From from day one, like I, the store I joined was very short-staffed, and I think that's why they took me, because I had no experience, I didn't know what I was doing, I didn't, like I'd never worked before anywhere and I was just kind of winging it and the manager was like well you seem nice like who's gonna give you your first job if you know someone doesn't take that risk which I thought was super nice of him but um you know my my first day I realized it's just me working the floor of this huge store which I think like by policy was supposed to have three people working the floor and then one manager per her, you know, shift, but it was just me alone my first night, and I think the regional manager, she wasn't even, she wasn't even, like, the store manager, they were just so, so short-staffed that she had to be there that night, and, and it was Saturday, I think, like, a super busy night for the mall that I was in, and all was going well like I was kind of awkward because I was greeting people and she was trying to run the back in the register and I'd never really like I didn't know how to talk to people in a retail setting because you know you don't like they're strangers but you're supposed to socialize and I was I was trying my best to be a good greeter and like the whole night was going good people were nice people were saying hi back which was a blessing it's it's like anyone that's worked the front knows how many times you say hi to people and they just look at you weird and run away. But uh, people were being nice and I was having a good day and then it gets to be like closing time. And we're starting to tidy up and organize, you know, like put the clothes away as you're, as you're still greeting people, you kind of tidy up the shelves and stuff. And so all of a sudden like five girls come in together and they all have I mean like in hindsight they were really bad but they were all doing like fake European English accents which I thought was kind of uncomfortable because you I mean you can tell they were they were all like being really really extra like oh like you're oh hey girl how you doing like trying to be all friendly super friendly and they were there, shop closed at like 11, and they were there till 11 at least. Like it was going past closing, but I don't think we could kick them out, you know what I mean? And they were just like stacking clothes up all over the counter, like, oh, I want this, this is going to look so good. Like all five of them trying to keep me really busy, trying to keep my manager really busy. And I noticed there's this guy that keeps passing by the front with a backpack. And he doesn't look like he should be, you know what I mean? Like he was like a middle-aged man. And these are all like early 20s, um, you know, late teens girls. And they kept, he kept looking at them. And then one would, one would like give them a little wave, like discreetly. So we couldn't see, you know what I mean? Like they were trying to be real discreet. 
in. I just kind of ignored it because I'm like, maybe he's the ride or something. But so we just keep treating them like normal customers, you know what I mean? And I could tell my manager was tense, like she was trying to keep her customer service face on. And I was trying my best, like I didn't know what was going on. It was my first day, but I knew something was weird. And so like they have this huge stack of clothes at this point and none of them want to use the dressing room. They just stack the clothes up on the counter, like $600 worth of clothes. And my manager's like, okay, like it's getting late. Are you guys ready to check out? And they're still doing the most. And that guy's walked by three or four times now, but he notices like I keep looking at him and then he keeps looking at them and then they go to check out and every single one of their cards were declined every one of them and then afterwards they just like after a little bit of talking and like all like trying to joke about all the cards being declined and stuff they just kind of left they were like oh have a good night and they leave and so my manager and i now have this giant mountain of clothes to put away and i asked her i was like that was so weird what what was that and she said that's like a organized shoplifting they'll have a bunch of people go in and keep all the uh, workers occupied and then they'll have someone come by the front with a bag and sweep product off the shelf and stuff it in the bag and run while they're not looking or while they're helping other people so that was an interesting first experience on the floor at night the rest of the shoplifters I saw were never really that organized. They just kind of like, like one lady was so obvious with it. It was kind of funny. I, I she, she walked into the dressing booth with, what, six pairs of jeans or something. And she had a whole bunch of shopping bags from different stores around the mall. And then she came out with none of the jeans. Like, like I wouldn't notice. And I tell my manager, I'm like, guy, oh my god, this lady just walked in with like seven jeans and left without any. And he said, there's, you know, there's nothing you can do. You can't confront them. You can't, you can't say anything. You can't like tackle them and <laughs> rip the jeans from their purse. But you could be like, oh, hey, I saw you were checking out those jeans. And I think I saw a shirt you'd like to kind of like acknowledge that you saw that they had them on their person without confronting them, confronting them. But I just thought that was crazy, and, and she she came back uh, maybe a week later with the same bags, like same outfit, same bags. Like she had her shoplifting, you know, uniform, and uh, I let him know that that was her, and he really like he tailed her around the store watching her, but she never really she didn't try the same thing again that time. And when when I started, I. I, I never really done retail, but I was anticipating that trying to find clothes for teen girls would be kind of like they wouldn't like me or they'd be difficult, but it was honestly their moms that were the worst. They they were the ones that made it hard. <laughs> the girls the girls would generally be really nice and they you know what I mean, like they they'd be polite to me, but the moms would like like one lady in particular, she just stands out to me. She went to the new jeans we just put out and grabbed them and ran up to me and was like, I found these on clearance. And I'm like, that's that's not at all where you found those. And I <laughs> absolutely saw you grab those off the new rack, but oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. There, There was one girl that would come in and she was like, it was hard to be mad at her because she was so positive but she would just like she'd she'd follow me around the store and she had her boyfriend with her always and she would show me pictures of owls on her phone specifically pictures of like owls and dogs and then she'd tell me that they were all her owls and dogs like like she just owned 10 different dogs and 10 different owls and I'd be trying to work and she'd be showing me her quote unquote like her pet owls and dogs and then there was a day she came in the first day I met her and she had a whole bunch of stuff and she put it on the counter and please note that I'm very new and afraid of the cash register this is like a nightmare for me 
learning the cash register and she checks out all this stuff all of it like 20 items and then as soon as the transaction is completed she decides she wants all of them in different colors so she asks me right there if i can like return them all and let her pick different colors and then rebuy them and my brain just exploded i was like i just wanted to cry i didn't know what to do but we figured it out and she got her different colors oh uh, owl girl i was very blessed to have managers that were super awesome our our regional manager was kind of like she was so high energy she kind of scared me a little bit but she was you know she was nice well being high energy uh but my other managers were they were just the coolest there were so many times where i felt like anyone else would have yelled at me while i was learning and they were just so nice but there was one night where it was once again late weekend night and it's just me and the manager and i'm trying to fold clothes in the front and he's at the register and in the back like dual operating the register in the changing rooms because we're understaffed again um but this guy walks in and i wasn't sure if he was with his girlfriend or if he was with like his sister some 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 girl and or, or, you know maybe she was his friend but they walk in and she picks out a bunch of clothes and she goes to try them on and he starts following me around the store. At first he was kind of, you know, like discreet about it. Like I thought he had a question or something or like he wanted to, you know what I mean? Like, can you get something down for me or whatever, you know? And he just doesn't say anything. And, and I'm starting to get uncomfortable because he's obviously staring at, at me. And then he gets closer and he's like, like I'm trying to fold clothes. I'm like crouched on the ground trying to fold t-shirts and put them on this low table and he's standing like six less than six feet away from me just looking at me and he starts asking me weird questions like when do you get off like how long have you worked here uh where do you where do you like where's your car park do you have a ride do you want me to give you a ride like we can we can drive you when do you get off when are you when are you leaving like when are you done and I was so uncomfortable. I was just like, and I, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't know where my boundaries were. I didn't want to get fired, like, telling him to go jump off a, a cliff or something. Like, you know, it's the, the uh, impulse response. But he was, he just wouldn't leave me alone. And so my manager, bless him, he notices the creepy guy. And this... This, he's not supposed to do this. You're never supposed to have just one person alone in the store. But he's like, oh, hey, can you go get me a phone charger? Like, I, I really need you to, to go get me this phone charger that's, like, all the way across the mall from the AT&T booth or something. And so he separated me from the situation, had me go get him a phone charger, and he talked to the guy and, like, kind of kept them occupied and like p took me out of that uncomfortable spot and when I came back they'd, they'd left they'd done whatever they were gonna do but it was really I was just so grateful that he noticed and you know wasn't kind of afraid to break the rules a little bit to, to help me out there the rest the rest of my experiences were kind of like what you'd expect i guess at this point what you'd expect from working in a sales position with the public there was one there was one lady that just like you know you'd have fussy customers that, that just you couldn't you couldn't do anything right by them you know like you could you could try your best put your biggest smile on and really really do whatever they asked and they still wouldn't like you or they'd be rude to you but there was there was one lady, and this usually the fussy people would come out at night time, but this was like 8 a.m. and I'm greeting, and my one of we have two managers at this point now. They finally hired some more people. The load wasn't so heavy, and this lovely manager of mine, she's she's helping me at the front get get the store together for the morning, and doors are open, and this 
this woman walks in and I just, the only thing I remember about her was she had bright red lipstick on and she walks in and she looks at my manager and my manager says, good morning, like, uh, welcome, how can we help you today? And the lady's neck, like, exorcist snaps to, like, oops, you know what I mean, L laser focus lock in on my manager. And she says, what did you say to me? And my manager's like, I said, good morning, welcome. And the lady just let loose on her. She was yelling at her, how she'd never been so disrespected in her life, how she would tell all her friends never to shop here again, how my manager was a bad person who was like, should never be allowed to be around people. And it's just this tirade of hate towards my nice little manager who said good morning and she kept yelling as she she eventually walked out of the store and she kept yelling about how we were evil terrible and as she walked down the mall she was still yelling about how evil my manager was and the lady like after she left i looked at my manager i'm like are you you know are you okay like but she just looked like it, it was another you know what i mean it wasn't the first time and i was like are you good and she was like yeah <laughs> and we just we both laughed about it you know you can't let it ruin your day but it was just it was wild i didn't even know what to do with that one she handled it like a champ though the the only time i don't know there were a few things that people would do that they weren't quite on the scale of screaming at my manager for saying good morning but just like you can tell when people haven't worked in in food service or clothing or you know with the public because there's like a level maybe not everyone some people just have good manners but a lot of people just don't show respect when they go into a store or they it's it's like part of the fun is making a mess there would be there would be people who would come in if they just you know what I mean, like trash as much as they could. They'd get as many clothes as they could, pile them up all over the floor, and then they wouldn't buy anything. And our store policy was like you had to pick, almost like you'd pick a, a customer and then pretend to be their friend for a few minutes. Like, like to the point of putting clothes over the top of the changing booth while they were trying stuff on and be like, oh, you should try this. And it was... I was always really uncomfortable doing that because I wouldn't like that, someone reaching over my changing booth, but that was store policy. And so by the by the end of it, there'd be like a humongous pile of clothes and a lot of people would damage the clothes, trying to try them on really fast with their friends and stuff, and then the clothes would have to go to, you know what I mean, markdown or clearance, and, and they wouldn't buy anything anyway, which would look look bad on us because we had to hit a certain number of sales a day and we also had to sign people up for a certain amount of cards every day which was hard so when when you have people in customer service ask you if you want to sign up for a card just be nice to them because they have to do it we had to like our our, qual our what's the word quantity we were supposed to do was four cards a day and it doesn't sound like a lot but People really didn't want to sign up for the cards because, you know, they just didn't want them. And, and then it'd look bad on us, I guess. And then, or we'd have to hit a certain amount of uh, money per purchase. So you'd have to hit like a $30 minimum per purchase or else you'd get angry emails from management saying that you were bringing sales down. But some people just went in and wanted a pair of sunglasses or something, or like a bracelet, and they didn't want to spend that much every time they came in. But I don't know, it's be nice to your retail people, they're trying their best. There were, my, my biggest pet peeve was the people who would come in and they bring something into the dressing room or I'd hand it to them, and I knew it was good, you know? and and it would come out broken and they'd say like oh this i found this broken can i get a discount on it when they'd obviously broken it in the dressing room like i wouldn't notice again and it happened way more than you'd think people would break stuff and then ask for a discount oh, i never really knew what to say either because i didn't want to be like i wouldn't hand you a broken garment 
like that obviously broken but also you can't really say anything if they're you know I'm, I'm just a I'm just a salesperson but uh, the store itself I think it shut down for a while actually I'm not gonna say where I'm, I'm you know as as is uh, customary but I think they shut down because their practices I think they couldn't get funding or their supplier quit or something but it was wild how much pressure they put on the managers and the, the associates to, to to just just the way they do it after after hours you know after the doors closed we'd often get an email at at midnight that they wanted the whole store rearranged by the next day and so that would mean that we'd have to stay till like 3 a.m. moving mannequins around and and since we were understaffed we'd have to be there in the morning again and then and they'd always email us really you know not preemptively not so people could have them have a chance to to you know do it at a decent time but everyone would be ready to go and there'd be an email and we'd have to go back and do it off hours we wouldn't get paid for it it was just like clock out before you run over your hours and then stay till 3 a.m re reorganizing everything and at that point where we only had the one manager he would you know he would open and close shift so it was all him and he lived an hour away and I always felt so bad like I, w <laughs> I wish that they were nicer to him or would put more effort into hiring people because it was just crazy it was too much to ask someone to be there at 7 a.m. work till 3 a.m. you know do it all again every single day I mean they, they did eventually restaff people but when I first joined it was nuts it was just wild Having, having good people to work with though makes it, like even the worst situation can make it fun at times. I mean, it's not fun working to 3 a.m. off pay, but if you have a group of people that make you laugh and are just generally pleasant to be around, it can make it tolerable instead of, you know, people that might make you feel bad on top of it. So I was, I was really grateful to have a a fun group of people and when I did eventually leave it it did make me sad because I knew I wouldn't see him again or but does anyone else get that when you quit a job and you know probably won't ever talk to those those neat people again because you're not friend friends but you're you know you, you enjoyed your time with them on this planet doing your thing I I was sad to say bye but I hope they're doing good Retail is one of those things that I think is a great job, even if you know it's going to suck and be hard. Some people are really good at it. Some people do make a career out of it, but I think it's good for everyone to work it at some point because it does make you kind of appreciate it a little more and it makes you want to do... If you don't like it, it'll kind of motivate you to do other things. Because I, I don't know. I didn't know what to expect, I think, when I signed up for it like I thought it'll all just be folding clothes and and saying hi to people but it was kind of physically strenuous you walk around for six hours a day and get what maybe 15 30 minutes to sit and then back on your feet and keeping up your social social face and if you're an extrovert it's probably easier but I was super introverted and didn't really know how to talk to people so I just I felt like I was thrown out into outer space <laughs> but it was good for me and it helped me learn to talk to people better and keep my cool if people are being rude to me instead of getting upset or letting it ruin my day it can kind of teach you a lot especially if you're young I was what eight, 18 19 something I started on my birthday actually but it was, it was a good experience. I didn't work it for long, but I'm glad that I did. I hear that a lot from people um, that have, that at least they learned something when they did work in retail. Same with food service. I had, um, I worked in food for a while. There are two busing tables, and those stories weren't quite as 
exciting as retail because I, I worked in a small place and it was generally the same crowd every day and they were all nice people. The only time I can really think of working food that was unpleasant was, um, I, I mean it was hard work, bussing tables is a lot of hard work because you're, you know, you're carrying stuff, you're, you get tired, you have to deal with people and it's kind of like less, you get less respect than a waitress and people kind of try to ignore you because <laughs> you're cleaning up the mess. It's not a flattering job all the time but it's a big help and the waitresses really appreciate you and this, you know the customers appreciate you and I, I did make some fun friends but there was only one time that I was kind of upset by a customer and that was the one time I, I uh, they were trying me out on the register I think more to see if people would like me than if I could do the job but within a few minutes like they kept commenting about how I had a northern accent and it was in a southern town and they didn't like it <laughs> so <laughs> they put me back to bussing tables and my regulars loved me. I, I, f I feel like I adopted a bunch of grandparents working there because they, they were a bunch of like middle-aged older people that would be really happy to see me every time they came and they wanted to talk to me and that was fun. With this drawing back to the drawing, I I think I want to try and get back to my softer colors I'd use during traditional or using traditional art because, I don't know, it's easy on digital to do the really bold colors because you can sample everything straight from the picture, but I mean, my last one I was happy with it, but it felt like it was starting to, to stray a little bit from my usual style that I like to do. And, um, I don't know, I don't want to stray too far just because I'm using a new medium. I want it to still look like, look like it would on, on paper, kind of. So, this girl was another bold color drawing, but next time I might try and see if I can make it look more soft. And, um, like, less saturated. Make it more sketchy. Maybe, I don't know if sketchy is the right word, you know what I mean. Make it look like like it was on paper. It was fun though. The colors are fun. I really like the color of, of that moth. That's that's what I am. Um, it made me want to draw it so bad as it was just such a fluffy, colorful critter on the door. I am really happy with how her clothes turned out. I like the sleeves. I wanted to do a sh something sheer, sheer sleeves kind of like a blouse tucked into her little thing and I, I think it turned out good. It's kind of hard to pick what clothes they'll each wear. They, I, I dress them similarly depending on what I want them, their vibe to be I guess, but this, this one was fun to try something with sleeves. I usually don't add sleeves. With I wanted her like fluffy rough to be the focus of what she was wearing and then finding something to complement that. I'm still learning about backgrounds. I don't really know what what always to do, but I, I'll figure it out. I'll figure out something that that feels right. It's just each one 
I'll learn something new about how I want to draw more in the future. And uh, that's just how it goes. I, I like how this one turned out though. I, I like the flowers. Next time, I already have in my mind what I think I'm going to do next time. Once again, I'm sorry about my fan in the background and for my dogs and cats running around yowling if you hear, hear them at some point in the video. Um, it's too hot to not have a fan going, but I uh, appreciate you watching anyway. Please let me know if you like this one, if you like the story, if you want to know any other stories, I guess, or if you have any other ideas. I'm definitely open to suggestions. I don't know what to talk about a lot of the time, but I guess a lot of people have that issue. And uh, yeah, this was fun. I ended up going in and adding some little twinkly things and a glowing thing and there's the finished one. She's up on Redbubble if you'd like to bring her home with you. Thank you for watching and follow me for more. I'll see you next time. Bye!